Hey everyone, welcome back to Static Pharmacology here on EMTV. I'll be giving you a patient care scenario, and your goal is to develop a treatment plan that emphasizes pharmacological management. For an extra challenge, I'll be putting a one minute timer on the bottom of the screen. When the time is up, we'll do the scenario walkthrough, and I'll give you my treatment. Enjoy the card, and good luck. Three, two, one. Facial swelling in a patient is one of the most concerning things that you can see. Let's go ahead and take a look at the scenario in a little bit closer detail. You were dispatched to a private residence for a 60-year-old female with facial swelling. Your patient is alert and oriented and reports that the swelling began in the lips one hour ago and has now spread to the rest of her face and tongue. She denies shortness of breath, denies any allergies, and is speaking in a clear voice. Physical examination reveals significant edema to the patient's lips, face, and tongue. There are no hives or rashes present. Lung sounds are clear to auscultation bilaterally. You hear no strider, and you see no accessory muscle use or increased work of breathing. Your patient denies eating new foods, denies possible insect envenomation, and denies a history of similar episodes in the past. She reports a history of hypertension and high cholesterol, for which she takes prescribed lisinopril, hydrochlorothiazide, and atorvastatin, medications that she has been taking for more than 10 years. Your partner obtains the following vital signs. Blood pressure 144 over 80, pulse 95, respiratory rate 19, SpO2 97% on room air, and tidal CO2 of 40, and a blood sugar of 78. So what's going on here? Well, clinically, her presentation resembles an allergic reaction. However, with no known allergies and no possible source of an allergen, what could be the cause? Her medication list actually reveals an important clue. Your patient is on a prescribed ACE inhibitor, lisinopril. Lisinopril acts to reduce blood pressure by preventing the conversion from angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2. Angiotensin 2 is a potent vasoconstrictor, and if we can prevent the conversion of that at the angiotensin-converting enzyme level, it should reduce blood pressure. However, angiotensin-converting enzymes are also responsible for the breakdown of the peptide, bradykinin. Bradykinin is responsible for causing increased vascular permeability in instances of cell-mediated responses to allergens. So with an excess of bradykinin, the patient begins to develop angioedema. The strange thing about this patient's condition, known as ACE inhibitor angioedema, is that it can occur at any point during treatment. The patient can have this reaction develop spontaneously even many years into treatment. Other signs and symptoms pointing away from a potential allergic reaction would be the lack of a rash or hives. And generally with patients who have ACE inhibitor angioedema, the swelling tends to be unilateral, so only one side of the lips or tongue tend to be affected. Now, although ACE inhibitor angioedema is an incredibly rare side effect of the medication, the incidence of which tends to be 0.1 to 0.7% of patients taking these medications. Because ACE inhibitors are among the most widely prescribed antihypertensives in the world, ACE inhibitor angioedemas account for 20 to 40% of all emergency department visits involving angioedema. So these patients are not so rare that you will never encounter them. 
Despite the severity of the patient's appearance, generally the treatment is supportive and with time, the angioedema will resolve. Ultimately, these patients will then be transitioned onto a different antihypertensive medication. So let's go ahead now and take a look at the treatment. Just like with all my other cards, I'll begin treatment by regurgitating the mantra, Scene Safe, BSI, IBO2 Monitor. Now, because there is no diagnostic test, to determine whether or not the angioedema is the result of ACE inhibitors or from mast cell degranulation and a true cell-mediated allergic response, for the treatment I put asterisks next to the medication. Your protocols may also just specify the treatment of angioedema without differentiation between allergic or ACE inhibitor, so the treatment would technically be the same. However, for true ACE inhibitor angioedemas, because there is no mast cell degranulation and histamine response, the traditional allergic reaction medications will not be beneficial, but it should be noted that administration of these medications will not make the ACE inhibitor angioedema worse. But with all angioedema patients, airway monitoring and aggressive airway management is the most appropriate treatment. If you were to use medications, thinking this is a different sort of angioedema, it would be traditional allergic reaction meds, starting with epinephrine. 0.3 to 0.5 milligrams of the 1 to 1,000 concentration, even IM or sub-Q, followed by diphenhydramine, 25 to 50 milligrams given IV, and then methylprednisolone, 125 milligrams IV. But ultimately, if this is ACE inhibitor angioedema, time is the best course of treatment. This patient still should be monitored in the hospital and admitted, just in case aggressive airway management is needed. And last but not least, rapid transport. And that's it! If you enjoyed this card, please make sure to head over to my channel for more. And while you're there, check out my other playlists, Static Cardiology, as well as Paramedic Pathophys. And of course, please continue to support the channel, like and subscribe below. Until I see you next time, stay safe and keep washing your hands.